Hey everyone, welcome to part two of the series. In this video, I'll be going over the steel beam design. So we have three beams that we need to design. To make this clear, I'm going to draw a quick section and then label up all the beams that we need to consider. The first beam we've got is the roof beam and that can be designed as a normal beam. And then we've got beams two and three and these are transfer beams. What's going to be particularly challenging about designing the transfer beam 3 is that it's picking up another transfer beam. So starting off the design with beam 1, this is a simply supported beam with a UDL. We did the load takedown in a previous video, so we can use these loads to design the beam. I'm going to go over the design fairly quickly and briefly, but if you want a more detailed design example, please go check out my other video. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below. Using the reaction forces from the load takedown, we can work out the bending moments for these by simply multiplying by the length and dividing by 4. Because the reactions are broken down into dead and live, the moments I'm working out also can be broken down. Normally I would have combined them earlier, but for the sake of this example I'm just going to break them down and add them up later. Now I multiply by the Eurocode dead and live load factors and then I add them up. Because the applied dead and live load are relatively similar, the deflection limit I'm going to be going for is going to be span over 250. We can now work out the I value required, which is the second moment of area. Okay, so we worked out an I value of 1628. So if we specify a 203 by 102.23 UB, which has an I value of 2100 centimeters to the four. Now, normally I won't do this, but I'm actually going to calculate the actual deflection with the specified beam. So all you do is just plug in the numbers into that equation, except you're finding the deflection instead of I. This is going to be useful later, so make sure you keep watching. Okay, so moving on to the next beam. So if you remember from the previous video and from the section that we just drew, this beam is supporting the ridge beam, which is supported off a masonry wall. So like with beam one, which is a simply supported beam with a UDL, this is exactly the same, except the main difference is it's supporting masonry and because it's effectively a transfer beam, the deflection limit, which I'm going to apply is gonna be a bit tighter. In the previous part, I already spread the roof beam reactions down into a UDL. So I'm just going to copy across the values here and then sum up the dead loads. So here I'm going to combine the dead and live loads together. The first set being the unfactored load and the second set being the factored load using the Eurocode dead and live load factors. So I'm just going to quickly check the bending moment even though I know it's going to be pretty negligible and the critical thing which we need to be checking is going to be the deflection. So the deflection limit I'm going to apply is going to be span over 500 and this value is quite commonly found in the red book for brittle partitions and you can argue that masonry is brittle. So we've worked out that the I value required is only 823. So we can specify a 203 UB or we can specify an even smaller beam, which is 178 UB. In this instance, because I know this is a transfer beam and I know how tight the deflection is gonna be, I'm going to pick the larger beam, the 203 UB. Again, I calculate the actual deflection, which comes to 2.4 mil. So now moving on to the third beam, which is probably the most important beam because it's supporting a transfer beam, which is supporting the roof beam. Again, because I've already done the load takedown in the previous part, all I need to do is just copy it across to my beam design. So for simplicity of doing a hand calculation, 
I'm going to assume that both the incoming beams are going to be centered to our transfer beam. Both the incoming beams are pretty close to the center point, so it's not going to be too conservative, but it is going to be a little bit more conservative. And because it's a transfer beam transferring another beam, I kind of don't mind it being a little bit more conservative than normal. If I had more time, then obviously I would check it for the right locations of the beams. And if I was doing this normally, I probably wouldn't even bother doing it by hand. I'd just smash the numbers into a piece of software. Okay, so just to recap the loads which are applied to this beam. First of all, it's simply supported and it's supporting two point loads from two incoming beams. It's also supporting the timber floor from the new extension and it's also supporting the existing masonry wall. And these loads will be uniformly distributed. So first of all, we're going to combine the reaction forces together so that we get the total point load P. And then we're going to apply the Eurocode dead and live load factors to them. Next we want to combine all the UDL forces together. And then apply the Eurocode dead and live load factors. So first I'm going to be calculating the bending moment for the point loads and that is given by the equation PL over 4. Next we want to calculate the bending moment for the UDL loads which is WL squared upon 8 which is what we've been doing in the previous two beams. Now we just need to add them both together and we can get a combined moment of 175 kN. So as a first guess, I'm going to try a deflection limit of span over a thousand. Now this is a really, really tight limit, so I may be looking to reduce this later on. Because it's transferring a transfer and because it's supporting a floor and also because it's supporting an existing masonry wall, that is the reason why I'm going so hard on the deflection limit. If I can get a sensible beam size to work even with such a harsh limit then that's absolutely fine but if I find that the beam size gets too ridiculous then I can look to kind of relax this limit. So I'm going to try a 254 by 254 by 73 UC and this has an I value of 11,400 centimeters to the 4. So I'll need to calculate the deflection values for the point load and for the UDL separately and then combine them at the end. So like with the moment I start with the point load first. and I get a deflection value of 2.6 millimeters. So now I just do the same thing by working out the deflection value for the UDL load. And I get a deflection value of nine millimeters. When you add the two deflection values together, you get a combined deflection of 11.6 millimeters, which is greater than the deflection limit, which I had set earlier. The 254 UC is already a pretty big beam and it's really really heavy as well so it's going to be quite hard to handle. So the obvious thing to do would be just increase the weight or increase the size of the beam to make it work. So before I go and do that I'm going to go back and try and see where I can kind of thin down the design a little bit. So I want to first check what the compounding deflection values are. So I'm going to be looking at the deflection values of all three beams and then adding them up together. And when you add all the deflections together, you get a total deflection of 33.8 millimeters. Now this deflection is quite a lot and it actually exceeds the roof beam deflection limit of 25.6 millimeters. So what I'm actually going to do is to relax the deflection limit on the second transfer beam. So instead of a span over 1000, I'm going to try a span over 500, 
with a limit of 10 mil. In this case, because spanner over 500 is 9 mil, which is less than 10 mil, I'm going to be limiting the deflection to 9 mil. So even with a new limit of 9 mil, the combined deflection or the compounding deflection is still exceeding the deflection of the roof beam limit. So that means we'll need to increase the size of the roof beam. We're not changing anything for the first transfer beam, but remember we're changing the limit for the second transfer beam to 9 millimeters. So our roof beam is going to have a new deflection limit of 25.6 mil minus the combined deflections of the first and second transfer beam. And when you plug the numbers in again, you get an I value of 2934 centimeters to the 4. And that means we can use a 254 by 102 by 25 UV. And this has an I value of 3410 centimeters to the 4. Okay, so now going back to the second transfer beam, we now need to design the beam for a deflection limit of 9mm. So I'm just going to try the same beam size but just the next weight up. So once I plug the numbers back in, I get a deflection value of 2.1mm and 6.5mm. Once I add these together, it comes to 8.6mm and this is less than my 9mm limit. Therefore, the beam size which I've selected is okay. And that concludes the video. Hopefully you found this video useful. It's really important that you check the compounding deflections whenever you've got a transfer beam. This is especially important if you're supporting a floor because if you've got one side which is actually compoundingly deflecting a lot more, that means that your floor is not going to be level at all. If you'd like to see more videos, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.